On your screen is a live view of our Falcon 9 rocket on Space Launch Complex 40 in Florida. And this launch will actually be the first of two launches for SpaceX today, with the CRS-28 mission targeted to lift off just a few hours from now from Launch Pad 39A, carrying supplies for the International Space Station. And today also marks the 13-year anniversary of our first ever Falcon 9 launch from Pad 40 back in June of 2010. The satellites flying on today's mission are our second-generation satellites, also called the V-2 Minis. And the full-sized V-2 satellites are designed designed to be flown on Starship, while the V-2 Minis have been modified to fly inside our payload fairing on board Falcon 9. And while the V-2 Minis are smaller than the full-size V-2s, they are still much bigger than our previous satellites. And more importantly, they include more advanced phased array antennas and the use of E-band for backhaul, which will enable Starlink to provide four times more capacity per satellite than earlier iterations. And this means these V-2 Mini Starlink satellites will ultimately enable us to provide more bandwidth with increased reliability to connect, Starlink has started. To connect millions of more people around the world with high-speed internet. At T minus four minutes and 15 seconds, the range is green and ready to support, and weather is looking 90% go with only a 10% chance of violating weather criteria. And the teams are currently tracking no issues with the vehicle or spacecraft. And the clamp arms around the second stage have fully opened. And it may look very slight on your screen, but the strong back has began to recline away from the vehicle in preparation for takeoff. And coming up next at T minus three minutes, we should hear that stage one has completed liquid oxygen loading. Stage one, lock load complete. At T minus three minutes, Falcon 9's first stage is now fully loaded with RP-1 and liquid oxygen. And we are waiting for completion of locks loading on the second stage about 50 seconds from now. And the white clouds you see circling around the vehicle are completely nominal and the result of our super chilled liquid oxygen coming into contact with the relatively warm ambient air at the launch site turning the liquid oxygen back to its gaseous state. And again, we're waiting for stage two locks load completion at T minus two minutes. Stage two, lock load complete. Falcon 9 is now fully loaded with 1 million pounds of fuel and liquid oxygen. And the booster or first stage of the rocket that you see on your screen is flying for its third time today, having previously supported Crew 6 and M Power B. And after liftoff and stage separation, this booster is scheduled, to land, scheduled to land on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. And today's mission marks the 170th reuse of an orbital class rocket. And coming up next, we'll hear a call out over the nets, updating us that Falcon 9 is in startup, meaning that the flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. And we can expect this at T minus one minute. Falcon 9 is in startup. And we just heard the call out that Falcon 9 is now in startup. In a few seconds, we should hear our launch director or LD give the final go for launch. LD, go for launch. And as you just heard, the launch director has given the final go to proceed for launch. Let's sit back and watch as Falcon 9 takes our 22 Starlink, sa Starlink satellites into space. T minus 30 seconds.
15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition. Engine's full power and lift off of Starlink 6 4. Go, Starlink, go, Falcon. At T plus 30 seconds, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 from Cape Canaveral, Florida at 5.56 a.m. Eastern Time. The next major milestone coming up is max Q, which is when the vehicle experiences the greatest amount of external stresses as it ascends through the Earth's atmosphere. Falcon 9 is supersonic. And Falcon 9 is now traveling supersonic, meaning it is going faster than the speed of sound. Max Q. We are about one minute away from a series of events being MECO, stage separation, SCS-1, and fairing separation. MECO stands for main engine cutoff, which is when all nine Merlin engines will shut down in preparation for stage separation. During stage separation, pneumatic pushers will separate the first and second stages, and the first stage will begin its journey back to Earth, while the second stage will light its Merlin, vacuum, in. Light its Merlin vacuum engine, marking second, marking second engine start one, to propel our Starlink satellites to their planned orbits. And shortly after, the fairing halves will separate and fall away, fall away from the vehicle to later be recovered. And let's keep an eye out for these events happening in pretty quick succession, in about 20 seconds. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. Evacuation. And as you just saw and heard over the nets, we had successful Miko stage separation and SCS-1. We're now coming up on fairing separation from the second stage in a few seconds. separation confirmed. And we will be attempting to recover both fairing halves using our recovery vessel, Bob. Both of the fairing halves that supported today's mission are flight proven with one half flying for its sixth time and the other flying for its ninth. And currently, the first stage is on its way back to Earth towards our drone ship, just read the instructions. And the MVAC engine attached to the second stage is continuing its burn, which will last for another several minutes. Both stages continue on nominal trajectories. And as you just heard, stage one and stage two are both following nominal trajectories Excellent. and performing Excellent. as expected.
And as you can see on your screen, we have two out of Falcon's four grid fins in view on the left, and they measure four feet by five feet and help us guide the booster to its landing site by actively changing the vehicle's center of pressure. And as I mentioned earlier, today's Starlink mission marks SpaceX's 37th mission just this year and 236th mission overall. And coming up next in the mission is entry burn on the first stage, which is the first of two burns it will go through in preparation for landing. Designed and manufactured by SpaceX, Starlink is the world's largest satellite internet constellation. And Starlink satellites operate in low Earth orbit, which enables the delivery of high-speed, low-latency internet to people living in remote and rural locations around the globe. And Starlink is currently live in 71 markets and countries around the world. Stage one entry burn startup. Stage one FTS is saved. And there's the call out for stage one entry burn. And stage one, which we also call the booster, has ignited engines one, five, and nine to slow it down for atmospheric re entry. Stage one entry burn shut down. And you just heard the call out that the stage entry burn. Stage two FTS is saved that the entry burn on the first stage has completed. And the next major milestone coming up will be, be the beginning of our stage one landing burn, where a single Merlin engine is lit up to scrub Falcon's last bit of velocity before touching down. And we can expect that last landing burn to begin in about a minute from now. Stage one transonic. And you just heard the call out that the first stage is now transonic, meaning it is traveling nearly the speed of sound. Stage one landing burn. And there's confirmation that the stage one landing burn has started in preparation for touchdown on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. Stage two, terminal guidance. Stage one landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. And this Falcon 9 first stage has now successfully launched and landed for the third time. And we're now coming up on second engine cutoff. Go. Expected loss of signal for Eastern Airport. Nominal orbit insertion. And there you heard the call that we were waiting for for Seco 1 in confirmation of good orbit. Today's landing marks our 197th overall landing of an orbital class rocket, including Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy missions. And with confirmation of successful first stage landing and second engine cutoff, that will wrap up our coverage for today. Be sure to check our social media for confirmation of Starlink deployment. And if one launch wasn't enough for you today, be sure to check out our CRS-28 launch coming up in just a few hours if weather cooperates, with coverage beginning around 8.45 a.m. Pacific time. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.